High sugar is never worked. Dr. Clean, who was the head of the British medical services in World War II, did this research. He studied all the different subcultures around the world, indigenous cultures, whatever, and they came up with what's known as the 20-year rule. 20-year rule means 20 years after you induce white flour, white sugar, to a, you get the outbreak of diabetes. That's it. So sugar plays the biggest role. And fructose is the worst. Cooked animal and meat and dairy are the second category. But what happens, there's lots of problems here. Basically, a high cooked fat blocks the function of insulin. That's the basic bottom line. People who are diabetic also have some kind of genetic tendency that they have more fat in their cells, and it creates a backup of the system. So it creates insulin resistance. That's what we're talking about. So animal products do this problem. Dairy does it. All these things cause inflammation. And that's one of the keys. Is diabetes is the inflammation of the whole system, and particularly the beta cells of the pancreas. And live and die, as you'll see the result, creates a specific anti-inflammation effect. Other uh, researchers have tested diets that are sort of semi-vegetarian. And so we thought, all right, let's do a real study. Let's bring people in and get all the junk out of their diet. Remove the meat and the dairy products and the eggs. And keep the oils low, too, so that people aren't eating a lot of fried foods. And that was what we wanted to test. We did some preliminary tests that were very favorable. So in 2003, the National Institutes of Health of the federal government supported our work to do a careful test of a vegan diet for type 2 diabetes. And the results were wonderful. So just by eliminating the meat, by eliminating all animal products, right. meat and dairy, by reducing all the sugars mm -hmm. and oils keeping oils low, just by doing those three things without any doing any other exotic optimizing the diet, these people had lower... Their, their blood sugar fell, mm -hmm. their cholesterol fell, right. they lost weight, their, and, their blood pressure gets better as well. Eliminating the toxins from our bodies is also a very important part of regaining and maintaining one's health. Pesticides, herbicides, and your heavy metals all have their effect. Mercury poisons the beta cells of the pancreas and deactivates insulin. Fluorine causes insulin resistance. Cadmium affects the kidneys and causes insulin resistance. Lead causes insulin resistance. So arsenic uh, creates hormonal disruptions, which also causes insulin resistance. Caffeine increases insulin resistance by 30%. Cigarettes increase insulin resistance by 20 to 30%, whether you're a lighter smoker or a heavier smoker. Low fiber diet, because high fiber diets uh, slow down the glucose going into the system. Stress prevention. We there is a substance in white flour called aloxin. How many people have ever heard of it? And aloxin is a specific poison to the beta cells of the paper. Specific. It destroys the beta cells of the paper. So we don't really don't recommend anything with white flour. Wheat itself tends to increase insulin resistance. In the Ayurvedic system, it's called copogenic. It tends to create diabetes. What we learn from the live foods, and we learn from what we call juice fasting, is you, you can turn on, you can turn off the diabetic and switch right. and activate people into a healthy lifestyle, a healthy on anti-aging Please stay tuned to Healthy Living here on Supreme Master Television. We'll be back with more from Drs. Bernard and Cousins on how a vegan diet can contribute to our overall well-being.
Today on Healthy Living, Drs. Neil Bernard and Gabriel Cousins explains how people who have switched to a vegan, meaning animal-free diet, have recovered from type 2 diabetes. Adopting a plant-based diet brings along with it many other health benefits as well. I actually wrote a book about 10 years ago called Foods That Fight Pain where I talk about painful conditions like migraine headaches or arthritis or menstrual cramps. For Not everybody, but for many people, when they get away from dairy products, their arthritis improves or it goes away. Same with migraine headaches. We actually, which is surprising to Gabriel here, is we, we have healed type 1 as well. We had one person that actually was this type 1 and got into our program by accident for a movie we're doing with it. He got the onset in his teens with a blood sugar of 1,200. Wow. That's a really high. Yeah, it should be 85. Okay, in four days, he's off all insulin. Wow. Two weeks, his blood sugar is running 73 to about 85, varying. Uh -huh. He's healed. We're off at 30. 73, February 14th, with, without no. insulin. And you telling me what program works? What program works? This works. This works. We do specific training on the optimum diet. And what's the optimum diet? It's your, again, your organic, vegan, 80% live food. And we, in this particular, we do a lot of, uh, of indigenous diet things like temporary beans and you know, that kind of thing and some grains because they're actually been shown being quite good for diabetes. Mm -hmm. okay. The mainstream medical community considers a person to be free of diabetes when their blood sugar is below 125. However, Dr. Cousins finds that when the blood sugar is below 85, it helps to stimulate the body's organs to heal. One goal of his program is to keep the blood sugar at these low levels for a certain number of months after the initial 21 days to give the organs a chance to rejuvenate. Okay, most people are coming with 300s, 400s, things like that. And so we drop it very rapidly, but then we want to see it stabilize. We want to see the pancreas heal. We want to see the adrenals heal, the thyroid heal. And these are things that we're talking about that are really important. The hypothalamus, these are things that have all been disordered by a way of life. We want to see people that they're exercising because exercise is very, very important. Losing weight is very important. Those are two associated factors with the onset of type 2. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the gentlemen who came to your program, he was about to have his foot amputated, and you mentioned that certain portions of his body were starting to lose sensitivity. This is uh, scar tissue from the burn, and I forgot all about my foot and the heater. If he weren't to reverse it, he would be going towards the amputation. They should have cut your foot off. <clears throat> they didn't, because look at it now. How has he fared? He, within uh, three weeks, his foot was all healed up. He could, uh, his neuropathy, which is what we're talking about, went away. His skin condition improved. His mental state improved dramatically. Mm -hmm. We need to understand a new piece of information, which is Alzheimer's associated with diabetes. Oh. And so he was like in that confused mental state, and that also cleared up. He was in his late 40s and way overweight and, you know, the classical diabetic, obese and eating sugar and mentally not clear and suffering pain in legs, about ready to be amputated. That's what we start to see is, is the classical kind of uh, symptoms that begin to happen, complications. And so it's not fun to live that way. I've been the man with a lantern looking for the truth and my God, I found it. There's one regret that sometimes people have. They, reg they regret that they didn't do this about 20 years earlier. Right. Because to be in a body that feels healthy, it's the best possible thing. Not only to, to be healthy for yourself, but for your family. To be a good example for them. Thank you for your company today on Healthy Living. Our show airs every Monday on Supreme Master Television. Please stay tuned for Science and Spirituality right after Noteworthy News. Wishing you good health and great happiness.